complete fake. Now to throw. Looking to the end zone. Fires and picked off. He's at the 50. He's at the 30. 10. That's a fumble. I got to tell you, man, I'm impressed. Not with the throw, not with the decision, but how the offense flew around after the interception, getting to the ball, David, and creating that fumble. And I think the... Welcome to Huntington Bank Stadium, home of the Minnesota Golden Gophers as we get set for what ought to be a terrific battle. There's nothing quite like a great rivalry matchup in college football. The bitterness, the intensity, the lifetime of memories that will come as a result of what we're about to see in this one. As we'll see a squad from the Big Ten, the Wisconsin Badgers, taking on another team from the Big Ten, the Minnesota Golden Gophers. Glad to have you with us for EA Sports College Football. I'm Reese Davis, David Pollock, and Jesse Palmer with me in the booth. Guys, we are ready to tee it up. And the badge will kick it away to start us off. He'll bring it out. It's Taylor. Makes a move. He's got it out. any better than to take the opening kickoff all the way to the house. How about the speed by the return man? Once he got in the open field, that dude was gone. This place is going crazy. He'll try to tack on one more. And the extra point makes it 7-0. How about that for starting things with a bang? Opening kickoff and house that baby. What a job there. They're just about to boot it away full of energy after housing that last kickoff. Let's see what he can get done from inside his own 15. Not a lot of space to be found. Good hustle by the coverage team, and they stop him at the 21. The Badgers' offense takes the field to start this game off. When Minnesota and Wisconsin get together, not much more satisfying than reaching around, grabbing that axe handle, and taking a swing at the goalpost. That's the stakes today, guys. Yeah, and a lot of stakes, a lot of emotion. These guys don't like each other. Listen, the Gophers and the Badgers are built the same, Paul. They're the same identity. It's toughness. It's running the football. Who can establish that in this football game? And to me, it doesn't matter if you're a fan of either of these two schools. If you just love college football, what makes it great? It's the rivalry games, right? This is the most played rivalry, the FBS. Paul Bunyan, Zach's. This game is always so much fun to watch. They bring him down, and he's going to lose a yard on that one. Now they'll face third and four in their first possession of the game. To the air. It's Van Dyke. Fires left. He's got it. So important to convert these third downs, and they get it done. They'll have it at the 42. The Badgers come to the line with a new set of downs. Easy. On the run, it's Mabusi. He's dropped behind the line of scrimmage. That'll be a loss of three. Last play was a near disaster. Now dealing with second and 13. He's looking to throw. Got a man. It's Pauling. And he goes out of bounds after a nice pickup on that one. The games etched in the lore of this rivalry are typically tight last second field goals in the like. But Wisconsin won in a blowout a year ago. Yeah, the Badgers grabbed that axe and bludgeoned the Gophers a year ago. Just beat them down. And defense gets to the quarterback. 
It has been said that the other team's quarterback must go down, and he must go down hard, and he did. And often is good, too. The most you can get to him, but great job by the defense, rushing the quarterback, understanding pass, and getting the big fella on the ground. And the Badgers will send out the punt unit. They'll have to punt for the first time this afternoon. They'll put that return to a stop at the 33, but the offense set up in pretty good field position. So the Minnesota Golden Gophers offense try to get something started with their first possession. As we take a look at our impact players for this game, David, what do you look for to make an impact from your leaders? Your leaders not only have to lead the football team, but they got to step up and make plays on the field, keep everybody calm. These guys typically do a really good job of it. Yeah, David, and they also generally set the tone for their respective football teams. Regardless of which side of the ball play on, the teammates look towards them to step up in big games like this. Unloads to the wideout. That was an eyelash away from being picked off, and that is not the way to set the tone with a near pick on your opening drive. These old rivals have gone at it for a long time, first meeting way back in 1890. It is the most played rivalry at the highest level of college football. Yeah, you're right, Reese. And even though game hasn't always had national championship implications or Heisman Trophy implications necessarily, this game defines what's so great about college football. It's the rivalries, right? You don't have to be necessarily a fan of either of these two schools, but appreciating the history, I think, is what makes this game so unique. Yeah, and the trophy games are so fun just to watch the teams react at the end. And they know, starting this game off, one of them is going to run across the field and get an enormous axe. How flipping cool that. The Golden Gophers are on the move. They'll go to the ground. He had to fight for a couple down to the 33. All this intensity, all this build-up for an axe. What kind of axe do you have your place, David? Well, I have the, the body spray. But no, this rivalry obviously means so much. These programs built so similar to each other. So many tough guys in this football field wanting to come out here and swing that axe. Third and short from the 28. Let's see if this is four-down territory or if they just pick up the first here. They've got it just outside the red zone. They'll move the chains. It's at the 21. They're about to snap it for the seventh time on this drive. To throw, it's Brosmer. And it's incomplete. If you're going to take a hit like that, you might as well hang on to the ball. After they couldn't connect, it's second and 10. They're testing the right side here. Pulled down after a pickup of six, but he gets it inside the red zone. It's down at the 15. And the Golden Gophers have taken it inside the 20. From the gun, wants to pass. Really strong job by the defense. A negative play on third down. They've decided to try to go for the field goal here. And the holder will put it down on the left pass. A 34-yard attempt coming. Absolute shank. Missed it. And the margin remains at seven after the miss. And Wisconsin has its offense back on the field. They just didn't quite find the rhythm on that last drive, Jesse. They had to punt it. I think they got to be more physical, David. I think up front they got to do a better job getting blocks and establishing this run. And how easy does football become if you're the more physical team? If you can threaten the run and then, then run play action, it opens up the whole offense at your disposal. They'll try the run. He's knocked down in the backfield. He'll lose a couple. How about the defender being a heat seeking missile he was on radar lock he found the football and flew down with some bad intentions and that defense gets to him and down he goes at the nine in these situations third in eternity I, I know exactly what to do i'm putting more dbs on the field i know it's a pass my best pass defenses and then i turn my pass rushes loose go get that qb The Badgers will call on their punt team. Three and out, they got stuck in reverse. The punt can bail them out. He gets it away from his own end zone. 
He only needs a sliver of daylight. He's brought down, but a really solid effort to pick up every bit of yardage he could on the punt return. The Minnesota offense is headed back onto the field. We talk about settling for points, but sometimes when you have to settle for nothing, David, it can be demoralizing. Yeah, and it can definitely be frustrating. And I think it leads to the say, maybe I go for it more. But, Jesse, I think this offense just needs to put another drive together and just finish stronger. Yeah, and, and be a little bit less predictable, too, especially as they get closer and closer down to the end zone. He's brought down, but there's a flag on the field. Let's see what the call is. It's been said over and over, you have to protect players' head and neck area. This penalty is so important at the college level. That's going to do it for the quarter, and Minnesota has the lead here. One period in the books, and let's take a look at the stats. Now to see if these guys can get back in the game in the second quarter. They'll break the seal on this quarter here on down. Right back to the well. He locked up and held on to bring him down. Great job by the whole defense, but how about the little bit of defensive back throwing his face in the fan? I ain't scared. I don't just cover guys. I make tackles. They bring him down, and he's going to lose a yard on that one. That linebacker saw the express lane right to the ball carrier. And a great job by the defensive line getting some push, making them use their resources on him. Linebacker comes free, bring them making the backfield for a tackle for a loss. The tackle is made, but he's got it first and goal from the six. The offense threatening. Close to the end zone now with a new set of downs. Quarterback flips it ahead quickly to the receiver. Tackled there by the defense. And that's just an example of the defense having a better play call than you have on offense. I like the creativity offensively, but how about the defense having their cornerback in position to make the play? Makes the grab on the left. That completion will take it inside the four, and the offense is threatened. Now it's third and goal. To the air, it's Brosmer. Unleashes to the end zone. And he's got it! Touchdown, Golden Gopher! That touchdown puts him up by at least two scores. Too early to say it's over? Probably, but boy, it's starting to feel that way. It might not be over, but you're in trouble, and you better find some answers really, really quickly. This team is putting everything together, and right now you got nothing going. Come on, give me something. They'll try to add another to their lead. And the extra point pushes the lead to 14. That makes the score. About to kick it off after punching it in for the touchdown. Caught inside the 20, chance for a good return. Couldn't find a way to create that broken field as he stopped at the 25. The Wisconsin offense will come back on the field to jump around a bit. This is when pressure can ramp up a little bit on an offense, David, when they start feeling the heat to answer a score. And I think being down 14, you can kind of feel that way. But, dude, if you put a good drive together, this is a seven-point game, so Palmer, no need to panic. I was just going to say, David, I mean, this thing can flip quick. You go down, score, all of a sudden your defense gets a stop, or who knows, better yet, gets a turnover. This game is entirely different. And a lot of times you want those big plays. You want those splash plays. But sometimes you're going to take some losses. You're not going to run the football overly well. But if you continue to run it, you can at least create some balance. You at least have the threat of it. Otherwise, you're just going to abandon it, and now it's just going to be a passing game. They were all over him, nowhere to go as that third down play turned into a disaster. And the Badgers will try to pin that with the punt. Hauls it in, looking for space. He gets a block. Can they catch him? He did that one all by himself. Make a few guys miss, turn on the afterburners, and boom, everybody's toast. 
And that's why you got him back deep, because that guy can do that. You got to be explosive and quick and have good vision. And you see all those things on one punt return, takes it back house, makes people miss, turn it on the gas. Great job, great return. Lining up to tack one more onto that lead. And the extra point is true, and the lead balloons to 21. So his big play capability was on full display in that one as he took punt back for the touchdown. Pulls it in inside his 20, and here he comes. Finds just enough space to cross the 25. Let's mark it at the 27-yard line. And Wisconsin has its offense back on the field. They're down by 21 points, but you get a touchdown here, and you do at least apply a little game pressure, Jesse. It's true. I think for them to get back in this one at this point now, they need the quarterback to play his best football. He's going to have to be good really pre-snap, they've been making sure they're in the right looks, and he's got to be really good with his decision-making. He's got to be dialed in because defensively you're giving up points. So it's not like you have the luxury of your defense playing great. The offense is going to have to score and score pretty dang quickly. Third down conversions, always a huge stat, and they've got a third and long from the 27. Dropping back, it's Van Dyke. They're bringing heat. And the pass rush is effective, and they tackle him at the 19. You gotta be impressed with this defense early in this game, guys. They've got a big lead because they are getting after the quarterback. They've already generated multiple sacks. They thought coming into this game they could take advantage of this offensive line, and that game plan is winged to perfection. The Badgers will bring the punt team onto the field. We've reached the two-minute warning, and this thing has been one-sided, and they hope to at least have something to feel good about going into halftime. And here comes the punt team. Three and out, and not much choice but to get rid of the ball. He'll try to field the punt and bring it back. Powers through. Returns like that are why you don't settle for the fair catch if you don't have to. Picks up just a little bit of yards to help out the O. Minnesota has it back, and the Gopher offense is headed onto the field. Got it in the middle. It's Jackson. Touchdown, Golden Gophers! And once he found open space, the band might as well start playing. Number nine. And this receiver is on fire. He's got all the skills that you look for in a big-time target. And that's already his second touchdown of the game. Why not double the try total and go for two? Lasso! Lasso! Looking to throw. Able to hook up there incomplete. Well, every coordinator has a couple of two-point plays in his back pocket. They dialed one up there. They didn't get it. Let's see how that affects the outcome of this one. From inside his own 15, looking for a crevice. Couldn't find a way to create that broken field as he stopped at the 25. Wisconsin offense will come back on the field to jump around a bit. They'll throw it on first down. They find themselves in a pretty deep hole here, but maybe a chance to grab a little momentum and regroup at halftime. Yeah, a big chance. Like, this is this is an opportunity. This is the biggest opportunity in front of them in the game right now. You got to get some points on the board. You got to create something positive, Jesse. There hasn't been a whole lot to be positive. And he couldn't hold off the heat, and he goes down with the sack. Well, I think one of the biggest reasons why this team is finding themselves in a hole here in the first half is this has been a sack party. They can't keep the defense off of their quarterback. They haven't been able to get the ball deep down the field, throwing it with the consistency they want because they can't keep their quarterback standing up straight. They've already racked up big sack numbers. It's starting to snowball, and they are ready to go again. On the run. It's Van Dyke. Got his man quickly. And not much doing there as that defense runs him out of bounds. 
Wow, this offense is just stuck in the mud. They've already punted four times, and it's third down now. They're looking for an advantage to the right. And he's not going to get there. The defense stands tall and makes the stop. And the Badgers will line up to punt it away. On the move, looking for a little slip hole. He'll get it to about the 25 before they put a stop to the return. The Minnesota offense is headed back onto the field. He's looking to throw it. Working the big fella downfield and outside. Hit the afterburners, kid. He's at the 10. Touchdown, Minnesota. And they take it in for six more points. And you can tell, he trusts his big tight end. Airing the football way down the field, treating him like a wide receiver because you know he's going to go up, make the big play, get you in the end zone, score a touchdown. PAT unit on the field. The kick is up and good and put one more on the lead. That kind of drive will boost your confidence. One play, hit the big pass, put a touchdown on the board. The kickoff team out there getting set. From inside the 15, here come return. Couldn't find a way to create that broken field as he stopped at the 25. Running out of time here in the first half, they're going to have to be efficient to put some points on the board before the break. Quarterback, quick pass to the receiver. That's what you expect from a senior. Don't give them any extra yards. Great tackle there. First in the books, time now to join Kevin Connors in our halftime update. Guys, from Minneapolis to Madison, there are some ornery folks and some emotional fan bases enjoying a soda pop and a little trash talk in this battle for Paul Bunyan's axe. And there is no better place to start this halftime than by reviewing how this wideout has been a one-man king crew. The kid's been everywhere, and I love how he's willing to go across the middle, but that he also has the Jets to burn these DBs on the deep ball. If this defense wants to actually come back in this one, they better hide his cleats. With that, let's throw it back to the guys to see how this rivalry matchup plays out. Thanks for that breakdown, Kevin. The Golden Gophers will kick it away first and will start the second half. From inside the 15, here's the return. Finds just enough space to cross the 25. Let's mark it at the 27-yard line. And Wisconsin has its offense back on the field. Nothing went right in that half in the first order of business here. Try not to be embarrassed any further. But the comeback is possible. Remember 2006, Michigan State down 35 to Northwestern at halftime? They somehow came back and won the game. But it all starts on one play. And that has to happen here on this first drive for the offense. Yeah, the first possession, because your, your possessions, you're only going to get so many possessions, and you've got to score on every single one of them. Off-defense special teams have to play out of their mind, but they have to believe. Now they'll line it up from the 44 on first and 10. Come on, set. They'll give it to the back. Continuing to churn and move it forward, and they're closing in on midfield. It's down at the 48. Halfway there on first down, it's second and five. Green 25. Go to the ground. Got enough for the first down and wants more. Brought to the ground, but not before getting enough for the first down. This offense hasn't found the end zone yet. Starting to move, it's first and ten. Takes the handoff. It's Malusi. Good execution. They move the sticks, and they've got it at the 33. You're down. Obviously, half you had a conversation. we got to come out and put points on the board. And, Jesse, it looks like they're going to start with the ground game. 
And I love this, David, too. Regardless of whether they're losing or they're winning, come out here and try to be the most physical unit here in the second half. Get this run game established. And sticking to the run. I'll tell you what, a lot of teams that are really good are really stubborn, and they continue to run the football even with little success. So this offense is going to continue to focus on running ball. You can tell. Going for it all. And makes the grab in the end zone. Touchdown, Wisconsin. That is so impressive. Not only was it a great catch, but also he made sure he had one foot in bounds to get the touchdown. Beautiful job. Ready to try the point after. Hit that one with some aggression for the point after. So it's a 73-yard touchdown drive. And they finish it up with the final 30 yards coming courtesy of that touchdown pass. Here he comes from inside his own five. Ripping through the defense. Not a lot of space to be found. Good hustle by the coverage team, and they stop him at the 21. Minnesota has it back, and the Gopher offense is heading to the field. Boy, that last touchdown, the one play quick strike scoop. And the pressure gets there. And down he goes at the 18. We'll see if they can get a little better protection after the sack at second and 12. Quick strike complete. And they're able to force him out of bounds after a short pickup. This defense is going to have to be careful. Not only do they have to worry about this guy running the football, but they've got to keep their eye on him when he runs routes, too. He is a versatile back. And a missed opportunity on third down as the defense knocks it free, and fourth down is coming up. And the Golden Gophers will punt this one away. Snap to the up man. It's a fake. And the roll of the dice turns up in their favor as they pick up the first down. It's so many times when you're studying the other team and their defense and what they're going to do, you know there's certain looks you're going to get into. And I think they saw one they liked, snapped it to the up back. He and that pressure just engulfed him. A sack for this defense. That sack gets this offense behind the chains. It's down. Looking to throw, it's Brosmer. They get to him as he throws. He got his hands on it, but couldn't hold on to it. What a time that would have been for their first pick of the game. I'm not positive, but that first down marker might be in the next county. Throws for the tight end. On target over the middle. And he's not going to make it. The defense denying the first down. The Golden Gophers send out the punt unit. I wouldn't quite call it a shank, but that's not exactly going to go on the resume reel. The Wisconsin offense will come back on the field to jump around a bit. The last time they had it, they took it down the field for a touchdown. They can build some confidence that they could go back to scoring drives here. Yeah, and remember, it's not uncommon for offenses to find themselves as the game goes on. They had some things not go their way early, but they found something last drive, David. Let's see if they can build on it. Yeah, you, you just pick and pick and pick until you find that place where you're like, okay, this is an advantage I have. They clearly found that dude. They score here. We're in for a ball game. They bring him down, and he's going to lose a yard on one. Ball's up to 29. Defense can taste getting off the field. It's third and long. From the gun, wants to pass. And the pressure gets to him. Down goes the quarterback. This has been a frustrating day, and I'm not sure it's going to get any better. You're already down huge. Listen, this offense can't protect this quarterback. They don't do anything right now. This defense has had their number all game long. Fourth down, and the punt team sends it the other way. Books it all the way in, and now turns his attention to the field. He'll get it up to about the 44-yard line before they slam the brakes on him. The Minnesota offense is headed back onto the field. Here's another opportunity, Jesse, to stretch his lead after punting last time. I think it goes back to your playmakers, Reese. I think it's finding the guys that have been working for you earlier on in this game and getting them the football. And there's obviously no need to panic. I mean, think about it. You got the lead. 
you got the football. You got to be smart with the football. Make your plays. Put a good drive together here. Caught in the backfield. It's Williams. Still running at the 40. Afterburner's coming. The 10. Touchdown, Golden Gophers. And the route is on. And, fellas, I tell you, the Gophers are starting to give the Badgers the business end of that axe. <laughs> yes, they are, Reese. I tell you what, the Gophers taking the lead in this rivalry game late in the ball game. Palmer, they are set up with the way they're built. They're in a good spot. Yeah, when you think back to all the great games in this rivalry between these two schools, it usually comes down to the team that's the most physical. And so far here, it's been the Gophers being physically dominant in the trenches. Now they'll line up for what they hope is automatic. And the extra point will tack another one onto this lead. Boy, they didn't exactly milk the clock on that drive, did they? Two plays and into the end for the touchdown. Kickoff team has the ball teed up, and they're about ready to go. Catches it inside his 20. Chance to really gain some ground. And the return man has no place to run, no place to hide, and a place to be tackled. And Wisconsin has its offense back on the field. Back to throw, it's Van Dyke. And that complete pass caused by the big hit on first down. Second down coming. After misfiring, it's second down. From the gun, running back on the move. He's knocked down in the backfield. He'll lose a couple. It's been that kind of day for this offense, right? It seems like anything they're dialing up just simply isn't working. But at this point, David, I don't know if it's even worth trying to run the ball. Probably not. You're getting destroyed right now. Nothing is going. And the Heat will get home, and the quarterback goes down at the 17. And it's been a long day. I mean, I, there's not much to point out that this offense has done well. They're behind huge, and they got no shot if they can't somehow find a way to protect their quarterback. The Badgers decide to punt it away. Doesn't say much for your drive when you're looking forward to the punt. He's got it. Slips through the line. And the coverage team able to wrestle him down. Minnesota has it back, and the Gopher offense is headed onto the field. The give is to Taylor. Really nice stop there from this senior leader. That's going to do it the quarter, and Minnesota has the lead here. This has been a complete obliteration so far, as the third quarter stats will show you. So will the beatdown continue, or is this a comeback for the ages in store? We'll see as we start the fourth. And here comes the offense on second down. They'll leave it with him. What a good run there. He has enough for the first down. Here's this offense with a fresh set of downs. And this is exactly what you want to do when you're on offense. You have the lead. You want to chew the clock, keep the ball on the ground, keep that thing just ticking, Palmer. They're just imposing their will, David. And that's something that we've seen, I think, all game. Up front, they're the more physical team. They're the ones that's getting push and that's getting movement, and it's carrying over all the way here deep into the fourth quarter. The stop is made, but this offense is threatening. First and goal from the nine. They show great trust in their quarterback right there, and why not? He's had an outstanding game. The outstanding game has taken care of the football. Now late in the game, you got the lead. That first down now tells... Touchdown, Minnesota! And the stomping has commenced. 
They've extended this lead, guys, but sometimes in a rivalry game, you get down and you fight back that much harder. Man, you've seen crazy comebacks and crazy swings of momentum in rivalry games. You just need that first thing to break your way, Palmer. I think it really comes down to key playmakers, David. They can come back, but these guys need to take ownership. Now's the time in this type of game, they have got to step up and start making plays. On to attempt the try. The kicker is on for the extra point. And with the extra point, the they push the lead out a little further. A very efficient high play scoring drive. And what a way to finish it with a nine yard touchdown run. He'll bring it back from inside the 15. Just never had a chance to shake loose, and he'll be brought down at the 24. The Wisconsin offense will come back on the field to jump around a bit. The last time we saw this offense, we had to look like it was a three and out, Jesse. He just had no rhythm in that last drive. So someone's going to have to step up and make a play, David, and get this thing going. Yeah, let's find some juice. Find your guy. Find those plays that you know you can run inside out, forward, backwards. Get some first downs. Get some positive momentum. Back to throw, it's Van Dyke. Fires to the wideout. Reacted well to the tip, but just couldn't squeeze the football. Instead of the turnover, it'll be third down. And it's just been that kind of day for this quarterback in this offense, guys. They have never been able to get into a rhythm throwing the football. Timing's been off, accuracy hasn't been great. We've seen some drops, just not in sync. And that's why they find themselves trailing by a lot right here late in the game. And a big game, and they've got it on the 46. The offense has struggled. They're not going to win this game. But trust me, this coaching staff is still trying to find things to build off of for next week. And after an explosive play like that, maybe they can generate just a little bit of momentum and gain a little bit of confidence that they can keep coaching up heading into their next game. Man, it's so important when you play QB. I got to know to put some air on it. And I got to know when to rocket that thing in there. Work in the middle of the field. He knew he needed the rocket. Threw it in there. Great job. Great catch. Pressure coming. No more time to throw. Quarterback is sacked at the 35. And I tell you what, this defense, they've heard all about how great this quarterback is. They came in today with a mission, with a purpose. They've been flying around, harassing him, and making life so hard on this offense. That's the last thing you want as an offense, a negative play, a sack on first down. Looking to throw on second down. Fires to the middle. Cut him downfield. And he gets it down to the four-yard line before he's finally stopped. A terrific run after the catch. And the Badgers trying to get a touchdown on first and goal. Use the play fake now to throw. Looking to the end zone. Fires and picked off. He's at the 50. He's at the 30. 10. It's a fumble. I got to tell you, man, I'm impressed. Not with the throw, not with the decision, but how the offense flew around after the interception, getting to the ball, David, and creating that fumble. And I think the QB breathing a big sigh of relief. You thought you made a game-changing pick, but how about flying to the football, like you said, making the tackle, getting the football out, recovering it, and, you know, getting a first down. That's how you do it. Trying to get to it. What a complete disaster. What a terrible decision to run that far backwards and take the safety. And that's the exclamation point right there. It's been a bad day, man. This offense... They're going to have to find some answers over the next couple weeks, especially the next week at practice, of who they are, what their identity is, because all they've done today is struggle around and now give up points. After giving up that safety, they'll have to boot it away and give it right back to them. Return is tackled now at the 43. The Minnesota offense is headed back onto the field. 
first. This has been exactly the way you draw things up, David. The offense has really been moving the football. And it's been great execution. They've done exactly what they've wanted to do. Build the lead. Now Palmer's a different animal. Now you got to protect them. You can tell they were paying attention in practice this week in the film room because they have gone out, everybody right now, on the same page. Here comes the offense on second down. Here we go. They'll keep it on the ground, trying to milk the clock. Nowhere to run on that one. He loses four on the carry. Here they come, facing third and long from the 40. Power football with the run. Sure, tackling there to keep him from getting to the first down marker. And this is exactly where you want to be as an offensive coordinator. Like when you've got the lead late in the football game, just run the football, eat the clock. Man, they put a good day together. They, they, they have had a they had their way with this defense. A lot of positive things to point to. This is one of those weeks when you watch tape, it's going to be really fun to watch it. Not like when you get beat up. A lot of big plays from offense. To the air on first down. Shoots it to the left. It's caught downfield. A quick tackle made, but he's got plenty for the first down. Here's this offense with a fresh set of downs. Let's go! They'll throw it on first down. They're trying to get to it. Time running out, and he goes down at the 34. Man, is that a just indictment of the day. Your quarterback getting drilled late in the football game. This offense is sputtered. They haven't found any kind of good rhythm. They haven't done things that, that really gives your coach confidence and makes you want to believe in them. This offense has a lot of work to do before their next football game. We'll see if they can get a little better protection after the sack. It's second and 12. Wants to throw. It's Van Dyke coming after it. And he feels the heat coming in. It burns him up. Another sack. The defense puts the exclamation point on the day. They have had a wonderful day, man. Doing everything great. Just, you tell, they were dialed into what was going on. And now just throw another sack in the equation. Hitting the quarterback, being disrupted. They've been all over the field. And we might as well state the obvious. First and second down didn't work out. Third and very long. Pocket starts to collapse. And this defense back to back sack, Jack. And how about this defense taking care of business? Keeping that guy under 200 yards is a heck of a day. Their offense has obviously done their job, too. And this has been an absolute beatdown. The Badgers will no, punt it away on fourth down. He'll try to really get into this one. Fields to punt and tries to help improve that field position. And he's going to get it up to about the 29-yard line before he's brought down. Minnesota has it back, and the Gopher offense is headed onto the field. Barring complete catastrophe, but this offense ought to be able to salt away this game. Yeah, and unless you're playing in a different league, this one's over. Like, there is no three-point conversions and stuff like that that you can get. So run the ball, make them use timeouts, Palmer, walk out here with a dub. Yeah, this defense should just use their timeouts. Can't take them with you, right? And let's just see. Who knows? Crazier things have happened in college football. Maybe they put the ball on the ground. They don't execute the center quarterback. It's a no matter how much college football changes, realignment, all of that kind of stuff, rivalries are consistent and winning rivalry games, well, that's just the best. Because they hate each other so much. So you take the field against your rival. You're able to put forth a performance like that. That is worth its weight in gold, David. Unbelievable effort by the winning team at Bragging Rights now. Bragging Rights for a while. It's, it's a fun thing to be able to accomplish. Now we also got to take in the next couple games because this is always there's a letdown that naturally happens after these big rivalry wins we feel like our chest is poked out we got to look on to the next game focus in on this next one so that's going to do it for us for jesse palmer david pollock i'm reese davis saying so long this bet another presentation of ea sports college football